Okay, we are live. Look at that. We're using Zoom and all this fancy technology. <laughs> hello, hello, Sarah. Thank you so much for joining me here. Yes, Amy, thanks for having me. Yes, and so we are going to continue our chats about the um, upcoming Women Sexual Empowerment Retreat, which is so exciting. This is the third round that we're on, and, and there's been so many wonderful women from all over the world that have shared their talents and their work with us, and this is just such a much-needed thing on this planet for us to connect as women and connect with our bodies and our sexuality and all the things that come with that, and um, yeah, I'm so excited to chat with you here, Sarah. Why don't you... Um, introduce yourself and let us know a little bit more about you. Sure, I would love to. And thanks for everything you already said. Um, just want to take a minute too, just to name the power that you scheduled this during the full moon on summer solstice week. Like, yes, there's so much lunar and solar power that's going to be amplifying the work we do together and helping us be really illuminated into some of the places and the things that we don't usually get a chance to see. So um, for anybody listening, I mean, one of our teachers um, is actually teaching on that, right? Like the way to harness astrology and the cosmos to, to live our best lives, um, to make our sexuality a superpower. So I just want to say I'm so glad, so glad for the scheduling and the timing of this. It's such a potent time at the height of summer here in the Northern Hemisphere to, to face all of this. So, so hi, I'm Sarah. Um, I'm figuring out which titles to use. I wear many hats. I'm a mom, I'm a writer, I'm a creative. I've worked behind the scenes with a lot of really powerful life coaches and storytellers and healers for the past 10 years as part of my journey. Um, I've been in sexual empowerment for almost 20 years now, starting in college. Um, I worked at the Sexual Assault Prevention and Awareness Center at University of Michigan, gave workshops on sexual health and wellness to thousands of people. And um, as part of my own path, I just learned at a young age, Amy, just like you, just like all of us, how there's like this truth of what is supposed to be happening in regard to sexuality and the way that we're coming into development into adulthood. And then there's the reality of what's actually happening for most of us, most of us, you know, given the current context of white American culture, that's what I grew up in, South Detroit industrial, industrialized blue collar American culture sexuality is really divorced from life. So like my path and my healing path and my teaching path is helping people come back into relationship with that innate fullness. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm just pausing, yeah. pausing in case you want to say anything to that. <laughs> oh, I love all of it and all of your background. I was just, uh, of course, I'm always like, I don't know what's with the tech. Is there like something that, um, I'm switching my microphone. There we go. Because I, I could hear you. I'm hoping that it like stops the kids feedback in the background. <laughs> but yeah, uh, and Cam and I were talking a little bit about that too is, um, yeah, it's, we just grow up without all of this mm -hmm. sexual empowerment and this knowing and this connection to our body and just totally disconnected and floating around. And it's, I'm very, very excited and very honored to be able to be here as a mother to both of my little ones. And, and as Kim was introducing her, her little one, well, her big children who are now teenagers and they get to, they get to be sexually empowered because we get to guide them and be the leaders in their life. Yes. And that's been yes. a big thing that's been coming up for me. And yeah, I love that whole piece that you've, um, you've been working in that area. Yeah, and I love, I love that so many are, you know, are all of the, are all the people on the panel, panel mothers? Do you know? I'm not sure. I know we've had in the past, it wasn't always all mothers. Um, no, I don't believe that we're all mothers, but okay. I always find that, um, there, that there's so much to learn from all of us. And that's, um, a lot of the women in the past have spoke to, um, on their like relationship with their moms mm -hmm. and just how that's kind of evolved. Cause just as women, we're all just so connected or maybe wanting to be moms or maybe choosing not to be moms, which is totally okay. I have that conversation with my kids all the time. One's like totally 
a mom and one is like yeah you know it might be a lot of work you know mom if I if I do all that so maybe I won't choose to be a mom I'm like well it's your choice you have the choice and you guys have the choice to not get married as well right Mm -hmm. um because for me growing up, I thought, oh, I have to get married. I have to have kids. I have to have a house. I have to do all the things that were shown to me. And um, now I look back and I'm like, wow, like I just followed everybody's, what everybody else expected of me. Right. And, and um, it's been so empowering to realize, wow, I can be a mom. I can be sexy. I can feel good. I can like, feel like, really be in my body and still be a mom at the same time right (laughs) absolutely oh my god when i'm when i'm listening i'm thinking about how like the beauty of this time that we're alive in right now and having the internet we're able to really teach and embody new ways of being to the younger generations where like what you're saying so many of us you know in our in our 30s 40s and beyond like we were presented with very strict ideas of what it meant to be a woman or a parent or an adult and obviously <laughs> much of it was rooted in oppressive structures or old crumbling structures or things that just don't serve absolutely don't serve every, everybody so i feel like what when you're saying that like i'm thinking about what an honor and a privilege it is to actually be a way shower at this time and to help connect with other way showers and to help like you said like you did the path that was laid out you saw we do what we believe is possible right innately as we're kids and teenagers and we're growing up into really it's not till we're 25 that our prefrontal cortex is done developing. And then in like astrology, especially like the Waldorf and Steiner astrology, they say that a soul doesn't fully incarnate until it's age 28. So it's like Mm. through that prenatal time to 28, we're just kind of like seeing what's here. And then from there is where we carve out our path of what's possible. And I think that's what we're doing at this retreat. That's what all the women who are speakers on the retreat are doing. It's what you're doing. Like we're just really, really committed to service and to showing other people what's possible so that way we can have empowered, sexy, thriving lives and not lives of yes. and curled up in resentment and, and just that stagnation, you know, that, that lack, that scarcity that has been plaguing us for like centuries. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, that fear that we're all constantly feeling and then the safety, just feeling safe in our own st- bodies as women um yeah it's it's been like you say plaguing us for so long and and it's such a deep deep um deep work that uh, in order to get it back into our bodies because our bodies remember so much and i'm thinking for myself this this journey is not just linear it's not just straight it's like up and down up and down And, um, when I say that, I don't mean, I don't want to scare anybody, but I'm just saying every time that I (laughs) do empowerment work, I'm always finding that there's another level, another layer and, and, um, yeah, it's ever changing. Yes. Aria, what do you need? Oh, okay. Silly girl. Of course you have to come talk about your poop. Yes. (laughs) That's very, 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 that's great. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> we were having these conversations this morning about, about how, um, they, they were like, well, poop, we can't talk about our butts and all this. I'm like, yeah, we can. I'm like, it's actually, um, okay for us to talk about these things. And maybe it's not appropriate in certain circumstances, you know, maybe when we're at the dinner t- table, it's not appropriate, but yes, we need to talk about our, our, our body parts and our bodily functions and all these things. So our kids, and that's where kids are just like, they're born just there. They don't have all these, um, expectations put on them all of a sudden. They're not, they're just free to be who they are. And they're teaching us so much. Like I even this, it, well, yeah, I guess sexual energy has to do with, um, financial and finances and everything too. Right. That, that sacral chakra, and it's interesting because <laughs> my daughter the other day, um, we had some f- friends and family and my husband, um, he's a welder. And um, so he, when he's working um, welding, he can make quite good money, like charge quite a bit. And he has his own truck and all set up. And my daughters, <laughs> they're, they're so funny. They're, um, they're like, well, dad, when he's welding, he makes a hundred dollars an hour. <laughs> they're 
just like no they they there's no filter from what they've they've learned about right and I was just like and I had to stop for a minute and be like oh yeah I guess that's totally cool let's just talk about that versus being like I my initial response was like oh we don't talk about that right and that's the programming that we don't talk about money we don't talk about our sexuality we don't talk about all these Agreed. these things right yeah. and and uh so it's just I I just love how innocent children are and, and I love <laughs> trying to bring myself back to that that innocence and that and uh just looking at things with a whole nother lens of like an open mind and everything I love but that. anyways <laughs> no I love that and it, it actually leads into like the for the workshop that I'm going to be leading during the retreat um what we're going to be doing actually is I'm going to lead people into a guided meditation to get in touch with the parts of us that have gone dormant and there's so many reasons why parts of us that we feel empowered in we feel beautiful in we feel shameless in there are so many different reasons why we might lock those parts up and put them on a shelf um you know so often people talk about and and for my own journey too like when we're held in a way that it doesn't feel safe to really be who we are the safest self-protection mechanism we can do is to hide away those parts because we don't want something beautiful to be tarnished you know we don't want to see the beauty that is us to, to um I don't know. I, I can't really think of a good animal analogy now because I love animals so much, but um, let's just call them the hungry ghosts. We don't want to feed them to other people's hungry ghosts, you know, like Gabor Mate says. Yes. So what we're going to be doing at the workshop, and, and I love the way you've created it. All the workshops feed into each other. All the teachings that each of us yes. are doing feed into each other. And so I happen to be um, placed towards the end of the retreat. So what I'm gonna be helping us do is ground, ground into and settle everything that we've experienced throughout the retreat. So whether you come only to my workshop or you come to all of them, no matter what, it's gonna be a grounded journey where we're gonna safely touch in to the places inside of ourselves, And just with an invitation and a question of what's lying dormant with, within us and how can we make contact with those parts that are here to wake back up to come back in service of our wholeness. And we're just mm -hmm. gonna be in conversation and we're gonna be willing to let ourselves be surprised at what comes up when we come into these rivers and stories of our bodies. It's always surprising. And then once we've made contact with that part of us that's here to wake back up, I mean, it really is almost like sleeping beauty, right? Where the parts of us go to sleep until it's time and we can be the one who wakes ourselves back up. And that's what's so empowering about it. So once we make contact with that part and it feels safe enough, we're gonna be in this container that's, you know, we're, it's a safe enough container, right? It's gonna be held energetically and spiritually. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna, we're gonna actually dance and we're gonna move and we're gonna start to, we're gonna feel into what does it look like? What does it feel like for me to make contact with this part of me, for me to start to embody this part of me how would she move? How might she want to talk to me while we dance together right now? And we're going to let our bodies have that conversation. Um, and people might cry, people might laugh, people might feel nothing. <laughs> I doubt that one. But um, I think when we can turn the framework from thinking that the answers are out here, and they are, there are guides that we work with, right? There are times we need people to hold our hands and shine a light. But ultimately, we always do know what we need inside of ourselves. We're our own best protector. We're our own best caregiver. And when we bring the parts of ourselves online that have been frozen and have been stagnant for whatever reasons, and not, not in a way that's too much, too fast, too soon, but in a slow pace that's just right, you know, yes. really, that could be the domino that just starts so much healing happening. Mm -hmm. so that's what I'm going to be yeah. that's beautiful I love that I love that it's all gonna meld together and it, I always I always like to introduce people to that just have an open mind for all of these workshops and just be open to whatever happens and I love that you're gonna kind of bring everything together because that's it's it's all so interwoven all of this work and so beautiful and 
people often um, will really connect with one person versus another. So it's so nice to bring so many different women together so we can um, share this on different levels. And maybe it speaks to one person on one level and one person on another, but the, the embodiment work, the physical, the movement in it, it is, it is quite magical. And I love your analogy of sleeping beauty um, and how you can find those things that are kind of lying dormant underneath and yeah, coming up. That, that comes just... straight out of, out of practice, personal practice, Amy. Like I was at um, a shamanic dream intensive in 2015 for summer solstice weekend. And that was one of the things I saw, the, the teacher, Robert Moss, he's amazing. He's a, one of the best dream teachers in the world. Um, but he led us into this journey, you know, into the caves of our innermost being. And it was absolutely amazing to see the way that we self-protect by putting ourselves to sleep. But then the work, you know, and that's why I'm saying with this workshop, I'm not sure what people need. The intention is for people to get whatever they need, right? for the highest good of all, yes. harm to none, for themselves, for the entire retreat. Um, that's my hope for people. But to see what, like, what is the journey of feeling safe again when we've been traumatized? It's not, it's not, tra things are traumatic when they happen quickly, when it's too much, too fast, too soon. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So one of the ways we start to, come back into relationship with our sensuality, with our power as women and as any kind of being is just making sure it happens at the right pace. So if I were listening, yes, yeah, sorry. I love the talk. I love the talk. I do. <laughs> it's <laughs> I love, to I, I love this too. I, I could do this all day chatting with everybody about these topics. This is, um, my, my passion for sure. Um, Yes. And I love, love everything you're saying. It's, it's going to be beautiful. And I can just, I can see it's, yeah, it's going to be a beautiful closure to everything um, at the retreat. And yeah, I'm very excited. And as Kim was saying, it's, it's going to be for everybody, right? So whatever level you're at, and I hear you saying that, um, that wherever you are, it's going to be for you. And um, don't be intimidated by this, you know, sexuality, like, you know, as much as it's a, a scary topic for some of us, and it's a big, big thing. And just people hearing the word women's sexual empowerment, they're like, what are you doing at these sexual empowerments? <laughs> like, what are you women doing? And, and, and so many people don't really quite fully understand it. And I love how you, you've put it together. Um, with your words and the way um, we just chat, I just chatted with Cam and the way she put it and, and hopefully people can begin to understand that this is regardless of your age, regardless of where you are in life, this is, this is totally for you and you will definitely take something away from it. Um, and regardless, like you said, if you, you just attend the one workshop or if you attend all of them, um, and I wanted to do, uh, don't I, yeah, I have it here. I was going to kind of give a little overview of everybody as well. So Kim, as I was talking, she's going to do a turn on and take your power back through sacred sexuality. Um, Monica is going to do um, the sacredness of pleasure workshop. Um, Monica is a lot of fun. She's really into astrology and um, so many, so many things. Um, and then choose your own pleasure. I have a little work, work, um, worksheet you can work through to like kind of encompass all these things um and then diamond makes sex a power manifesting astrology all that sort of stuff um she works a lot with stones and things too um and erica the body neutrality improving your body image is such a big one. Oh, so big for everybody to just just be okay with your body where it is and she does such great work in that area and then of course yourself, Sarah, and doing um, your inner, inner journey dance um, that we've been talking about, which is that embodiment work is just so, so beautiful. Um, like I talked to one of the last re um, ladies who did one of the last retreats and she did an embody embodiment work. And I, I, like I say, I had no clue what I was getting into when I was doing these retreats. I was just like, I did, I've done physical retreats, um, where we've done a lot of empowerment work, um, 
just by being around women, just having circles together is just so amazing. And then when you get the actual movement going and, and a couple weeks ago, I had a very good experience where I was just got right into the music and I was able to move through so much, so many emotions <laughs> that, and I was like, thank you. Thank you for introducing this tool to me because it's so powerful. And um, so many of you, you guys do this and have your own, your own flair and your own taste to it and your own way of doing it. And it's just so such beautiful work and so powerful and you I know I I've always felt so much lighter whenever I've done any of these these um journeys so I'm very excited about it totally and uh they say one more piece about that this I'm bringing yes. trauma-informed awareness to this so um like you're saying it is for everybody it is trauma-informed the, the practices themselves um are gentle they're gentle and gentle 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 practices we're actually shaking things out of our nervous system and beginning to open up some of the pathways that may be stagnant in a really, in a really gentle way. So I wanted to share that piece too. Yes. Yes. That's, I love that. Um, yeah. Very gentle and very, yeah, it's not um, invasive in any way you get to do what you're comfortable with. And um, I, I know I didn't mention earlier when we did the live, but um you can have your camera off if you feel like more comfortable. And then the other piece that we're doing is we're only recording the workshop. And then if we'll, we can do a Q&A after that's more private. So if you have questions for any of the um, goddess panel that's doing their workshops, have any questions for myself, you can always send those um, when the recordings aren't happening. And you can always um, private message us if you have any questions about any of this whatsoever, or um, comment, comment below if you have any questions, or if you want to reach out, and we're here, we're here to support you and be here for you. And my daughter is too. <laughs> yep, definitely. Tag me, tag me if you have any questions, if you need any or anything like that before the workshop. Um, Amy, I love that your kids are here. It's adorable. I love the Amy and Scout back. Yeah, daddy, daddy's back working long days. So we make it work, don't we? Yeah. And, um, and you know, it's okay to be a mom and to do all these things. And that's my biggest mission is letting moms know that it's okay to have little ones and still talk about your sexuality and still work on yourself and, and dig really deep. And we don't need to have all that shame around everything, everything from our, our periods to our, to our body. It's, and it's so funny. It seems so funny because like in order to have kids, you have to have sex, you have to do these things, but yet for some reason it's like <laughs> taboo and we're not supposed to talk about these things, but my little ones, I know they, they definitely know their level whatever they're able to learn at their, their level of um, awareness on all this stuff. And we use the proper terminology for body parts and all that things. But anyways, <laughs> yes. Yay. Yay. Yay for, Thank you. Yay for conscious parenting. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much, Sarah, for joining us. And yeah. And if, and again, if anybody has any questions, reach out and post in the comments and um we will uh talk to you all later have yes. a wonderful day sarah yes yes you too thank you everybody and you can get your tickets now too Just look for yes. yes our facebook pages and i've bye. attached it to this as well so bye-bye yes. <laughs>